Alright, well hello everybody and welcome back to another edition of the Forex Market Preview. I of course am your host, your fearless leader Jason Stapleton. And if this is the first time that you're joining me, thank you so very much for doing so. And if you're one of the more than 27,000 traders who have subscribed to the YouTube page and who continue to get these videos every single week, thank you so very much for doing that as well. And um, we've got a few things to cover today, but I thought what I would do is I would just spend a little bit of time talking about what we are, uh, uh, what I'm watching on the charts and some of the trades that I'm involved with. Because in what I'm looking at right now across the trading for next week, uh, less excited about that than I am really kind of talking about where I'm at in positions. And it just so happens that where I'm at in my positions, uh, you have a chance to come alongside me and, and almost be in there exactly where I am. So let's go ahead and kick that off. The first thing that I'll do, let's just start back here on the daily chart. Let's talk about, we've had major, major downward moves. Uh, in the syndicate this week, you guys will remember, those of you who took me up on that uh, dollar uh, trial. Oh, and by the way, one last thing, this is the last day for the dollar trial. So after today, the price goes back up, and uh, I don't know that we're going to do this dollar trial thing again. We've had a massive, massive response from people uh, who wanted to come in and try it for a dollar. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the stuff we did in the syndicate this week, just because it's at the forefront of a lot of people's minds having just joined up. So, but... Uh, as you guys will remember from the syndicate, we did trade this very profitably from to the downside earlier this week. And when we came into this shelf, if I bring in my line tool here, we took a look at this area in here as a potential area where the market may reverse. And as we moved down in there, we found some ratio confluence with the structure, and I ended up buying it up right there. And, of course, I got skunked out on that trade as the market just continued to plow down lower and lower and lower and guys now we're down into really the the last resistance leg here um it, looking back this this support leg goes back to uh 2012 and before that we're looking at uh well that's 2012 as well so i mean we're looking at a, a time frame here that we haven't seen the euro this low in a significant amount of time and the market is very oversold if we go out to the weekly chart here and we take a look at that um, you guys can see just how oversold the weekly chart is. We're at six on the RSI. Um, it's just it's it's begging for a rally, but where will the rally come? I don't know. I thought maybe we might see it last week, and I took a shot, and we didn't get there. I am going to be looking for a rally this week. So if I drop down to my 60-minute time frame, because there's no there's no play on this thing to the downside right now. You could short it back up here as it rallies into 2717s. Um, but really, this is this is not the place. I'm going to be looking to get long this uh, this market above 2760s. So I want to see the market break above this level here uh, into new highs. So we're going to break the downward move. So if we're watching the market move down like this, what we want to do is we want to see that market break to the upside. And once we break to the upside, that's going to be my signal. Hey, I want to go long. My stops will be below the previous cycle bottom lows, and there's a pretty good chance we'll see a decent rally out of this because it's, we're, I mean, guys, we're so oversold. Uh, getting a 382 rally out of this move is not out of the realm of possibilities. In fact, it's more likely than not, I think, at this stage of the game. And that rally takes us back into 32s from 28s. So several hundred pips of potential rally out of the euro here. The the you know the downside move it has occurred, and so I'm I'm looking to trade this. You know it's a counter trend trade. I'm I'm counter. I'm playing against conventional wisdom here, and we played it to the downside because we had an opportunity last week, and we're looking for some upside now this week. So we'll see what happens with it. Pound dollar. I'm still maintaining my short position on pound dollar. That's working out very well. I think I still think we can see a move back down into uh, 61s from 6250s, and, uh, and and we'll see if we get there. So uh, this this week was very good. We saw some continued move to the downside. We saw new structure lows break below, close below the initial candle here, um, and so you know things are going well with that. So I'm continuing to hold my down position on pound dollar because it has come out of. It had a nice rally here. The euro didn't get this rally. This rally happened during the uh, the Scotland deal that we all were watching very closely. Then we got the rollover. Well, Europe uh, never got this rally. The euro never saw that. So. 
we are looking for that same kind of rally out of the euro. And we're just looking for an area of support where the market might step in and start to buy it up. Um, New Zealand yen, New Zealand dollar, Aussie dollar, all getting crushed. Uh, the dollar just being showing a lot, a lot of strength here. And this is not a buy. We're not looking to buy. We got no structure. We got nothing here. Same thing with Aussie dollar. Aussie's got maybe a little bit coming in here, but nothing right now. This thing has just been on a complete tirade to the downside, and I'm not interested in stepping in front of that right now. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay out of both New Zealand and Aussie right now. Canada, we had a potential cipher pattern that was setting up last week. I won't belabor that by walking you back through it, but that broke out to the high side, violated our, our structure, so I'm out uh, on, on that as well. So I won't be taking that short position because we didn't get it. Um, now let's take a look at uh, uh, Euro-Pound. I am currently long Euro-Pound, barely. Not by much. We came down in. I bought this thing up on Friday. And I bought it basically because this thing was just trickling, 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 trickling down. We had no real... It's, it's down, you know. It's, it's following the move of the Euro. but I'm sorry, the move of the Pound. But there's just no real, you know there's no real desire here to sell. It doesn't seem like, it seems like the euro is gaining a little bit of strength. This plays off of my opinion that the euro is a little bit, is a, is a little bit oversold now. Um, and, you know, in looking at this, it's a question of is the pound weakness going to play out or is the euro strength going to play out? And I think with the euro pound that I'm going to, that uh, being long is better than being short at this stage. And I've got some rationale here with this kind of fade out that's happened over the last three or four days uh, that gives me some indication that we might see a pop. Now, here's the thing with this. This is also a hedge against my pound dollar position. So if, uh, if for example, well, uh, correction on that. Um, this plays against my pound dollar position. Um, because if in order to see the pound dollar continue to roll over, we would need to see the pound well weaken. I guess so. I have some, you know what? I guess I'm. I guess I may be wrong on that. I guess I may be seeing a little bit of um, this may be in the in the direction of my pound dollar position. Um, because if we see the pound weaken, we see the euro rally. That's going to be good for my pound dollar position. So eh, you know, it is what it is. I don't know what's going to happen with it. These two do not correlate terribly well. Um, we've seen some downward move here, but if you lay a euro chart or a pound dollar chart over here, you don't see a lot of correlation in here. So um, I'm going to play. I play these as I always do. I play them independently of each other. I'm not really concerned with what one pair is doing over another pair. Um, I just sit, tend to look at the chart and trade the structure that I see. Now I'm going to want to be cautious of this. A rally out of this back up into 7890s, 7900s. Uh, I'm going to need to take some profits off. So I've got about a potential for about 80 pips of profit in here if this market will rally and pop. Beyond that, I don't know. I don't know how, you know, how long I want to be because this market has been very, very bearish. And the last thing that we're going to look at this week is New Zealand yen. I got short this thing right at the very end of the day. And if I drop this down to my 60-minute time frame, down to my trading time frame here, I'm going to show you why I did it. Essentially what we had here, and I talked with the syndicate members about this on Friday, about my rationale for this, was I basically was looking at this double bottom that had existed here and the retest of the high that had happened right here. And I was looking at kind of a range, and that range looked something like this, if I'm going to draw this in here. Okay. So I had the lows coming in here, and I had the highs coming in here, and I said, you know what? If we break out to the upside, it's probably going to mean a pretty strong rally, and I want to make sure I'm on board with that. So I set buy stops just above uh, 86.50s. And I set sell stops just below the low here at 85.98. And as you can see, 85.94s got me short as the market in the very last hour of the day ended up pressing lower. Now we'll see whether or not this continues or not, but looking left... There's my most recent structure level, so my stops have got to be above that, and we'll see if we can't catch any more downside on this. Now, going back out to the daily chart and taking a look at where could we potentially go, we are sitting at this major shelf. So if we get under that thing, if we move lower, 85, 70s, 20, 30 pips potential there, and if we get under that, oh, holy smokes, look where we go. 
I mean, good grief. You got support down here at 8450s, a little inside shelf, then you got a little bit of resistance coming in at 8330s, um, and the next major support level is 8160s. So a fall from 86 to 8160s. If we grab our Fibonacci extension level and we see where this could potentially go, Fibonacci extension, swing high to swing low, and back down in. We're seeing our 127 extension come in at that interior structure level that I identified earlier. So 8466s is probably going to be a pretty good place to look for some targets. Again, if you're looking for that longer term hold. If not, dropping down to the 60 minute, we'll consolidate our chart up here a little bit. Well, good grief, you've got a move that uh, that could pop down here into the lows around 85.75. It'll give you about 20 pips of profit or so. Now, you're having a tough time making that risk-reward work, but, you know, it's still a play. So anyway, what I'm getting at here is there is some, some potential continuation move here to the downside, especially as weak as New Zealand has been, where we could see a significant move. We'll just have to wait and see what happens throughout the rest of the week. Um, I would expect, given when this filled, to have a little bit of pain here towards the beginning of next week, um, but that's trading, so... Anyway, um, that is pretty much it for this week, guys. Just a few things on my radar that I'm in and that I'm currently working and the stuff that we've been following in the syndicate and, uh, and then a, you know just a brief overview of the euro and the pound and some of the differences and, and the Aussie and New Zealand dollar and some of the differences about when maybe to go counter trend and, and when to stay away. So just a, that's just a couple of things to look at for this week. Um, I will see you back here next week. Do not forget, this is the last day for the Syndicate trial. So if you would like to do that, I'll go ahead and put the link at the bottom of this video in the About section uh, so that you can sign up for that if you so choose. If not, no problem. I'll see you back here next week. Until then, good luck and good trading. I will talk to you soon.